So it is one minute after four, although I see people are still joining, uh, but I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so welcome uh, students. We are prospective students. We are thrilled to have you join us for an hour to chat about computer science and uh, computer science at Minds and what makes us uh, distinctive. Um, so I definitely would love to hear from the students that are on the call. Um, if you could type into the chat, dear students, prospective students, uh, what are you? Are you at a community college? Are you at a high school? Are you a junior? Are you a senior? If you could type that into the chat. If you could type into the chat, have you applied to Minds? Are you waiting for a decision? Have you been accepted? Are you trying to decide whether to come next year and where you're from? So I would love to hear from the prospective students to go ahead and type those three things into the chat, please. Where you're from, where you're currently at, and um, what you're thinking about for minds. Are you a future prospective um, applicant or? All right, my chat is, I don't see any chats, people. Hopefully you're sitting there typing. There they come, there they come. All right. So we have someone from California who's been accepted. Awesome. A senior at Golden High School. So you're like, what, two blocks from mines or something ridiculous? That's awesome. Can walk over and join us. That's great. A high school senior from Texas who's accepted, Admit, another admitted from Dallas, another Texas been accepted, awesome, Kansas City. Nice, my son's in St. Louis, Missouri, so I'm very fond of that state. Um, another from Golden, accepted, Chicago, California, accepted after deferring a year, awesome, that's pretty cool, Austin. Uh, Fort Collins High School, New York, senior from Lawrence Free State High School from Kansas, up at Boulder, San Antonio. Yeah, so we can talk about the data science um, opportunities, Natalie, so don't let me forget to talk about that. Uh, someone from Parker, Colorado. Grandview High School. Wow, this is fantastic. Monarch, oh, you're from Monarch High School. That's up where uh, Sue Johnson is. She's a great teacher up there. Lone Tree. Okay, great. Well, we are thrilled to have you all on the call. Many of you are seniors, been accepted to Mines, trying to make a decision. Do I want to go to mines? Do I want to go somewhere else? And so uh, you're doing exactly the right thing by participating in calls like this so you can get to know the program uh, to see if um, being at CS at Mines is a place you might want to be. So I haven't introduced myself. So I am uh, Tracy Camp. I am the uh, department head of computer science at Colorado School of Mines. I've been at Mines. Ooh, since before most of you were born. I'll just say that. No, I've been here since 98. So what is that? 23 years now uh, I've been at Mines. So I've seen a lot of changes over the years. I basically spent my whole career here. I started as an assistant professor, got tenure, associate, full professor, and now I'm the department head of uh, the department. Uh, so I definitely know a few things about both uh, computer science as well as uh, minds. Uh, so we have lots of information we can share with you today. But let me go ahead and have Alex and Nick introduce themselves as well. So Alex, you want to go first? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name's Alex. I am a fifth year. So I am one of the many students that has taken advantage of the combined undergraduate BS plus MS program that MINDS offers. 
So I started at Mines in fall 2016, and last May I got my undergraduate degree. Um, and then I also had at that point four grad courses under my belt, um, thanks to in combination from the combined program. And then I like brought in pretty minimal credit from high school. Um, so if you're not one of those people with a bunch of APs and only a few, I was in that boat as well. Um, and so then in this May, I'll be graduating with my master's degree. Um, and the project track, when I was an undergrad, I just did the general track because um, they're pretty new when I was a sophomore, I believe. Um, and I just like couldn't really pick, <laughs> uh, pick one. Um, in my graduate degree, I'm working on educational technology. Um, in my undergrad, I also did some research uh, opportunities with hu human computer interaction um, and a lot of uh, a lot of programs that I'd love to tell you about, but probably don't have the time for. Um, so I'd love to tell you more about my time at Mines based on what you'd wanna know or just in college in general. Um, I studied abroad and I did a lot of um, things at Mines from Greek life to the McBride program to a lot of outreach with the CS department. So I'm more than happy to tell you all about it. All right, great. Thank you, Alex, Nick. Hi everyone, my name is Nick Karst. I am a second year here at Mines in the computer science and computer engineering track. Um, unlike Alex, I came with a lot of credits, so I am like well up, uh, well on my way of graduating in three years. So if you have any questions regarding what that looks like, um, I can answer those for sure. Um, but other than that, I'm from like Denver, Colorado. So a few of you might recognize Cherry Creek High School, and that's where I went. Um, and so I can talk about the whole um, choosing minds based on like, going to it from a big high school to relatively small college uh, type of environment. But then also um, at, in minds, I'm associated with Greek life. Uh, so I'm part of one of the fraternities here at minds. And then I'm also part of the Formula SAE team, which is the uh, Formula One team we have here at minds where we design, build an F1 car in a year uh, as the only computer scientist on that team. So it's pretty fun. So that's a little bit about me. Great. Whoa. I'm having sound issues. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, and if others want to turn on your video, if you have video, I love seeing the students. If we were on campus together, not in this global pandemic, you would all, uh, I'd be able to see your faces. So would love to see you if you don't mind turning on your uh, video. So great. Thank you. Um, so what uh, I normally do with these calls is, and I will do this at some point, is uh, I just pop onto our website and I do a quick tour of our website um, to point out a few things that you would be good for you to know and um, things that you can investigate more on your own time if you're interested. But before I do that today, uh, Alex actually has a class at 430. So she's got to leave in 20 minutes. And so I know you're like tracks. Alex mentioned tracks. What tracks are there? I'll talk about the tracks. I'll you know fill you in on the curriculum, what it would look like if you came to Minds. Um, I'll talk about you know different opportunities you would have. Uh, but there's a few things I definitely wanted Alex to cover before she heads off to class. So um, I'm going to ask Alex a few questions and you can listen to her answer. And Nick, you can jump in on things uh, that you know you want to add to as well. So one, Alex mentioned she did foreign study and we always get some good questions about foreign study and computer science is a great degree program to match with foreign study. So Alex, can you talk a little bit about what you did? Yeah, and at first I want to speak to that point about the CS major being the best major to study abroad with. Um, I'm sure you'll show them the flow chart later, they'll see it eventually. Um, but essentially what you'll see is that it's pretty flexible, like once you take a certain number of prereqs, actually the class I teach right now, data structures, once you take that class under your belt, which is only two um, prereqs in, uh, you can pretty much take any class and it kind of branches out like a tree. And so it gives you a lot of flexibility in your schedule. So to study abroad for a whole semester or what I did, which is a semester, you could probably even do a year um, and not get behind in the CS program, which is unlike a lot of other majors. I have some friends who also studied abroad, but unfortunately, like because of their major, um, it's not so flexible and they have only classes offered for certain semesters that they have to take. And if they miss a certain semester, they're a whole year behind. Um, that doesn't happen in CS because every class you need is offered every semester you need it. Um, so this the 
the international department loves when you walk into their office and you say you're a CS major. Um, and then from there, it's just a really amazing experience. Uh, Mines has a lot of great options about it. Um, the reason I chose it was because it was a small school and I just knew I wanted to go somewhere um, not entirely huge, like 20,000 people. Um, and with that, the every department is really just intimate and really works hard with you. Um, and so the international department meets that expectation and they helped me find um, a plethora of schools and programs to join. Um, not only did I was able to do a semester abroad in Budapest, Hungary, um, which I really recommend Eastern Europe for people who are trying to travel but may not necessarily be the most, you know, come from a background of means. I definitely identify with that. Um, and I can speak to some, some scholarships as well um, if people are interested. But they also, the international department not only helped me find a study abroad program, but I walked in into that office and also said I knew I wanted to stay during the summer as well. And so they helped me find not only a school to work with, but also some form of summer program. So I actually ended up doing what's called the DAAD program. It's like dad, but with two A's in the middle. Um, it's a research opportunity where you work under a German PhD student. Um, so I was able to study abroad in Budapest, Hungary, and then the following summer, um, I found out actually while I was abroad, like I didn't buy a plane ticket home. Um, I was like, I don't know where I'll be. I'll be here <laughs> in the summer. Um, so I got accepted to the DAD program um, and was able to work under a German PhD student doing human computer interaction, where we were working with Arduino sensors to basically um, work on expanding gesture recognition for specifically athletic scenarios. And um, that was a really great opportunity because it not only was I able to study abroad and learn about German culture and travel on the weekends um, and see a lot where like places where my family am from and stuff, but I also, you know, didn't just like put on my some my resume like frolicked in Europe for a summer because <laughs> that's not the most helpful thing. So the the international department is great at helping find opportunities like that. Um, that's not the only one, but that's the one I found. Uh, and if anyone has any questions about it, I'd love to tell you more about it because the research was great because now I'm a grad student and that helped me also um, start down that path as well, which I'm more than happy to speak to about as well. <laughs> awesome, Alex, thank you. So Nick, Alex talked a little bit about why she came to Mines. Why did you come to Mines? For me coming to Mines, it was just the opportunity that you get um, when you leave Mines, but also the opportunities you have when you're here. Um, so when I was looking at schools, I was looking for somewhere I can get my hands on projects and like doing stuff as an undergrad um, that would prepare me for the field. Um, and so what actually like switched my mind to go straight to Mines was the fact that Mines had the field session program. Um, and so that field session, which I'm sure we're gonna talk about later, um, is like a six week or a five week program for CS in the summer or any semester really, um, where you are working directly with uh, a company from the field. And so instead of giving their um, like computer science problems to their engineers or their software engineers, they're giving it to mine students to solve. And in that class, you're learning how to write presentations, how to uh, do sprints and all different kinds of like business focused or like field focused um, activities. And so, um, and then I have to give a final presentation at the end. Uh, so it really gears you for what the real work life is gonna look like. Um, and you're an undergrad while you take this. So as a required class, you have to take part, as part of the CS program, which is a phenomenal thing. Um, but then also just looking at Minds as a whole uh, and their whole job placement and how when companies, when they come to job fairs and stuff, they, they're the ones pitching themselves to you and you're not pitching themselves yourself to the company. The companies want you so badly. Um, and like being a comp sci major, especially like walking through the the sorry the job fairs like people are like trying to pull you aside to talk to them about their company and stuff so um just like that feeling needed and stuff it's a super cool uh thing about mine so that's why i came to mind awesome nick so i want to highlight a couple things that nick said so field session is a course that all students at mines have to take that's one thing that I think makes uh, minds distinctive compared to other universities is everybody has to take field session and then different departments implement field session in different ways. So in computer science, our implementation is an advanced software engineering class. And so you learn what it's like to be a software engineer uh, out in industry. 
Um, and then another thing that Nick touched on is our career center. Uh, that's another thing that makes minds extremely distinctive. Uh, I have visited many universities in our country and our career center is by far one of the top ones. So last, um, uh, you know, pre-pandemic, I haven't looked at numbers during the pandemic, uh, but our fall career day might have, for example, 350 companies that are there looking for students and about 120 of them want computer science majors, which is more than what we even graduate in a given year. And so it's a lot of opportunities for students who come to Minds. And I've heard students mention that they'll walk around the career fair and they'll cover up that they're a computer science student because they'll get pulled in uh, by various um, companies. So uh, Alex, you wanna add anything to that discussion field session or job searching? Actually, maybe each of you should talk about internships that you've had along the way. Yeah, so my summer after my freshman year, I, I was getting a pulled aside on my freshman year because I was a computer science major, but then when they learned that you're a freshman and you don't actually like quite know, have any like actual computer science classes under your belt, they're like, oh, okay, come talk to me in two years, but remember us. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Um, so I actually worked for ID tech camps uh, summer after my freshman year. Um, yeah, they just like a tech camp counselor. I worked specifically um, with their all girls camp, which is STEM outreach is like a passion of mine, which is also what led me towards that job. I also knew some like um, friends uh, that that got internships after their freshman year, but it's pretty rare. But I'd say if it's gonna happen, like it would happen in CS. Um, uh, and then after my sophomore year, I did that DAAD program over the summer. And then after my junior year, I interned at uh, a small startup in Boulder. They are seven years old now. They're called Woot Math. They have an online learning platform. Um, if you're from Colorado, maybe you've used them. Uh, I actually, they sponsored my field session project, which was awesome. So uh, if, it, if you take the classes normally or if you go abroad, you'll end up taking field session after your junior year, which is also a pretty important internship year. Um, some people try to move field session into their sophomore year, which I would like in hindsight might have done, but Oh well, I, I, I'm glad that I was able to work with Woot Math and they sponsored my project. Um, so that's like another path that's really great. Um, so Minds also has like a lot of companies that sponsor field session that are also at the career fair. And so you can usually make it work to where you'll, you'll get them to sponsor your project or you can work um, during field session. Um, and then what else? The, oh, my last summer, I was supposed to be a uh, uh, I was interning, interviewing for full-time positions. I actually got to the fifth and final round with Google and they flew me out to Mountain View and then I didn't get it. And now I know which question I answered wrong, which is like very frustrating, <laughs> but I know from my internship that I had the following summer at Intuit um, where I learned just so much about software engineering through working on their um, online payroll QuickBooks platform. Um, and now I'll be working for them full-time come August, so. Internships are definitely very important and I think they really solidify the theoretical concepts that you learn in the minds classroom. Um, but you know there's only so much you can you can learn in a semester and you can only you know project based learning is definitely something you can do at minds, but I also recommend actually getting you know out in the workforce and having a, a mentor. There as well. Awesome. So uh, I learned of a first year student this this year, a first year student who was very strategic in job searching for an internship, and he ended up with three offers. Um, so I shared that with what he did uh, with all our first year students this past fall semester in our interrupt meetings. We have required undergrad uh, meetings, and I shared what this student had done. So I'm hopeful that our first year students this year, perhaps if they were as strategic as uh, this other kid, hopefully they, they got more opportunities. Uh, Nick, you wanna share what you've Yeah, so like I said, I came in with a lot of credits. So I was able actually to take my field session the first summer I was here. So like the summer after my freshman year. Um, but before that I applied for the DAD program as well. 
Um, and I actually got accepted into a research program in Germany um, as a freshman. And so I was going to be working on like VR health and virtual reality kind of like glasses doctors can wear that can show them where the problem is on the human and stuff like that. Um, and so due to COVID, that was all canceled and shut down, which is kind of a bummer. But um, I was able to take the field session um, uh, during that my summer after my freshman year. And out of that, I was able to work for a small startup company. Um, and they like the ones who sponsored that project, uh, they were out in Westminster, Colorado. And so that turned into an internship for the rest of the summer. Um, I have like a certain knack for uh, aerospace and kind of like applying computer science to like aerospace fields. Um, and so the company United Launch Alliance, so ULA, they have a huge headquarters out here in Colorado. Um, I was able to connect with uh, one of my neighbors who works there and he was able to get me an internship for this upcoming summer uh, over there. So, um, but also I, I had a whole bunch of offers also this year from uh, the career fair, uh, including uh, AMD and Oracle, uh, but I turned those down because I wanted to do aerospace stuff. Um, and so what Alex said is just, even though um, like career fair and all that stuff, like they might not turn you, like might not like look at you seriously if you're a freshman or like, um, it's still a great thing to go to just because you're you're networking with all these people and the you learn that the companies actually send the same representatives year after year. So once you build like that connection with a certain representative, uh, the more likely you're going to be with that company. Um, and so that's another great part about coming to minds is they just have all that uh, all those resources available to you. All right, great. Alex, I know you have to go soon. Do you have any, like, what advice do you wish you were told when you were a senior in high school trying to decide on a college to go to? And Nick, you should think about that as well. Um, well, for me, it came down to money. Um, so I didn't see if there were any juniors in the chat, but if I missed that, um, like for me, I, I am one of the taking advantage of one of the many full ride opportunity full ride scholarship opportunities at mines. Um, so the one I have, unfortunately, if you're not already invited to it, it's too late if you're a senior, but if you're a junior, I definitely recommend checking out. It's an invite one, but if you apply early enough, that's like um, how to ensure that you have the chance to get invited. Um, I think you have to be accepted to mines by December 1st. Um, so for me, it was money, but also size, that is, as I spoke to earlier. And then um, I think also think about not just the college in terms of the college. Oh, that's my alarm to go to class. <laughs> um, but also about the environment. Um, the school that I was about to go to instead of mine was Carnegie Mellon, um, but I wasn't going to be a computer science major. Actually, I was going to be a chemical engineer. Uh, that's because I thought that's what I was going to be, but I was wrong. Um, and I didn't realize like when I applied and like picked Carnegie Mellon is like the other school to go to that it's like in the middle of a city and it is not in the environment and my mom told me these things and of course I didn't listen to her because like as your teenager you know better than your mom, even though it's not true. <laughs> um, as I've learned now. Um, and so I'm really glad that I actually ended up switching go to mines because what I learned in retrospect was that this environment is just so much more suited towards my lifestyle because I love camping and I love climbing and I love hiking. Um, and the other school that I was looking at would have not had those opportunities. And so I think like, yes, this is a decision for college and it's important, but also like think about yourself in so many other ways. You know, you're a person before and you're a person, you're so many other things before you're a student. Um, and like, yes, going to Minds is going to set you up for excellence, um, but you also wanna make sure that Minds or whatever school you go to is where you'll be happy at. Um, and so I just like, I hope you all find find happiness and have great adventures in college and beyond. <laughs> All right, thank you, Alex. So if we get any questions we can't answer, I will uh, connect you with one of the prospective students later. So have a good class, thanks for coming. Get to go um, learn about advanced computer architecture. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, so to add on to a little bit of what Alex was talking about, finding there's a lot of good colleges out there and finding a university that you think you will thrive at is your job right now. Uh, Mines is a great school. We have great students. Uh, we have a great environment. 
Um, but whether you feel like you fit at Minds is something that you know you should be thinking about. And that's why it's really smart for you to be at a call like this. So you can see what our opportunities are like and what our students are able to do and see if this is a good fit for you. Uh, there's lots of good choices out there. We're one of them. And you just have to figure out where, where you will be happy. Uh, and I always like to tell prospective students is hopefully you'll make a great choice and you'll, whatever university you choose to go to, you'll go, you'll love it, you'll stay. But if you go and it turns out it actually isn't the right fit for you, you can always transfer. So it's not, you know, like you're wedded to that school forever. Uh, I went to, um, after high school, I kind of went to a party school because that's where my best friend went. And I went there for a year and then I transferred to a studious, rigorous school. <laughs> it just wasn't a good fit for me. So I ended up making a poor choice uh, out of the gate, but I transferred and it all worked out fine. Um, so anyways, you're doing your homework right now as you're trying to figure out where to go. Uh, so Nick, did you wanna, any advice you'd give your uh, 18 year old self if you could? Yeah. So. My 18 year old self starting, uh, I applied to 15 different schools, got into 10 of them. So that was, I think in my mind, mistake number one, because it was like super indecisive and just had so many things to think about. Um, but it was kind of nice just to like have different options, I guess. Um, but uh, the big thing that I kind of ruled out as an 18 year old self was like money. I wanted to go somewhere that like we said, like somewhere I was, that was my environment and like I felt comfortable at. Um, so I actually had a full academic scholarship to CU Boulder um, that I turned down because uh, I wanted to come to Mines. Um, but also just um, like making that decision, uh, I had like a lot of like regrets and stuff like that. Like, ap like after I said, I'm coming to Mines, it was just a lot of like, dang, like, I could have saved like so much money by going to Boulder and all this stuff. Um, and so for me, uh, personally, like the advice I give myself then was to not worry about, um, like just to stick with my decision that I made and really just kind of make the best of the opportunity that I, cause like ultimately I had done my homework. I had done all this research and stuff and I knew that coming to mind is going to be the best decision. But even though those doubts kept coming up, I had to turn those, turn those doubts into kind of like excitement about coming to minds. Um, and so, um, because of that, I didn't do as much research on mines, like as far as like clubs and organizations I can get a part of. And like, I never joined one of these like computer science, um, like info sessions when I was accepted. And so um, I think the advice I give myself is just to learn more about the school that you're intending to enroll, right? You made that decision, you did your homework, you think that school is gonna be the best, now get excited about that school and really just try to um, find your community within that school because, um, the community honestly is like one of the best parts about mines like the academics are great but it's that community that keeps you going throughout all four years and this kind of makes you excited about the workforce after that um so i think that's like the biggest thing i would give myself is um just to get more excited about coming to school awesome okay so i am going to do a really quick run through of our website because i want to make sure we have plenty of time to answer any questions that you have uh, so one question that came up, uh, Nick, is uh, what track did you choose? Um, oh, you already answered. I didn't see your answer. Uh, did you know that you wanted to be CS when you enrolled at Mines? Yes, I did know um, that I wanted to be a CS. I did AP Computer Science in high school, and I was also part of FRC Robotics, um, where I did a lot of programming there. So I kind of knew that that was where I had the most fun, uh, but also knew like that's where I was going to thrive at Mines. So. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly and we are going to run through a few links on this, uh, our website. Uh, Nick, can you type into the chat the cs.mines.edu website for anyone who wants to uh, grab it as well? Um, so I'm just going to poke through just a few things. Uh, to make you aware, and then we'll switch to uh, question and answer. So on the CS website, if you go to programs and undergrad and click there, 
it'll take you to our undergrad page and there's lots of links from here you can learn about our student organizations, for example, we have several student organizations within the department like ACM and ACMW and LUG are really departmental organizations. And then we have several that are collaborative with other departments like robotics, for example, is in collaboration with mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. Uh, and the data analytics um, organization is in collaboration with uh, statistics, for example, and other departments on campus. Um, we have a security club, so I would encourage you if you came to mind to think about what club you might want to join. So that's the student organization link. You can read more about those later. Uh, Alex mentioned the BS plus MS, our combined degree program. So if you stay an extra year, you can earn a master's degree in computer science if you did that. But what I wanted to focus on is our curriculum. So uh, we were talking about the tracks. Let's take a look at the flow chart. So I always encourage students to, when they come to minds, that they should grab a copy of this flow chart and then cross off uh, classes that you've taken so that you have, um, can see like, oh look, Nick has his uh, flow chart showing. Uh, you can see he's highlighted several of the classes he's had or classes he's thinking about taking. Um, so this gives you like a nice visual of what you have to do to graduate. And then once all those boxes are crossed off or colored in, then you get your degree. That's how it works. So let's talk about this flow chart. So this is the computer science flow chart. Uh, these pinkish type boxes, these are classes that are the MINDS core. So these are classes that all students at MINDS take. So all our students take Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, and differential equations, for example. And you'll notice the first year, um, you know, you're in the same classes uh, with a lot of your other first year students. The blue boxes, these, this is the CS course. So these are courses that all computer science students have to take. All computer science students take data structures. Everyone takes discrete math. Uh, here's our field session course. Everyone takes operating systems and programming languages. The green boxes, this is where you get to start, you plan your own adventure, uh, for example, of how you want to focus your CS degree. So you'll notice there's 10 courses within the focus area, and then some example focus or tracks, what we call them, are on the second page of this flow chart. So um, Alex mentioned she did the general track. And so you can see here, there's a lot of flexibility in the general track where you get to choose the various CS electives that you might wanna take. Uh, or if you're into computer engineering, you choose the computer engineering track as Nick did. So these are the 10 classes that he takes for the computer engineering track. Or we have a data science track. I know one of you is interested in data science you would then take these classes. And you can see that those, there, we're in um, collaboration with the statistics program to develop this track. Or maybe you're into robotics, or maybe you wanna learn about research. So these are uh, the tracks that we currently have available. We also have um, in development a CS plus space track as in, you know, like, you know, Mars and things like that. Uh, space um, that I'm pretty confident will be approved and will be on our books for the fall semester. And that's in collaboration with Lockheed Martin and Ball Aerospace and the development of that track. I also like to point out often our students are interested in cybersecurity. We don't have a cybersecurity track, but we do have a cybersecurity secu certificate. Um, that is um, stamped by the National Security Agency, the NSA, and the Department of Homeland um, uh, DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, are back that um, back that certificate because Mines is a um, we're one of the designated university for really strong cybersecurity education. 
So students interested in cybersecurity will take the general track, but then they'll take all the classes associated with that certif certificate in order to get that uh, certificate. So I like to point out that. And um, going back to the undergrad page, um, you can see there's information for incoming students. This has to do with AP classes and challenge exams that you can take, uh, for example. So I encourage you to check those out. I encourage you to check out our research uh, page that gives some examples on how, um, what type of research that we do within uh, the department. We're kind of in three big areas, the intelligent area, which encompasses robotics and machine learning, algorithms area, and systems area. And then you can see where the various faculty uh, work within those um, different topics. Uh, so for example, uh, just to give you an example, Tom Williams, he works on robotics and what um, his focus is on is he is looking to develop robots and figuring out how best to have robots communicate with humans. Um, Hua Wang is kind of in the cross between machine learning and algorithms. His research is on, for example, uh, how do you develop machine learning algorithms for the medical field? So he has a couple projects associated with, uh, with COVID. So the other thing I like to point out is our outreach. So we do have a lot of outreach uh, opportunities for students, including an unpaid internship program for uh, high school students. So you could check that out for this summer if you wanted to. Uh, and we have scholarships for students with financial needs. That's what passes. Um, and we have CMAP, which I always like to really point out for our students. This is our industrial partnership program where these companies give us funding, which we then turn into scholarships for our students. And so this past year, um, this academic year, we were able to award 63 scholarships because of our um, uh, CMAP program. So I like to po point that out. And I'm going to stop there because I just wanna make sure we have plenty of time for Q&A, but I encourage you to check out our website for, um, to get more details on some of those things. So what all would you like to chat about? So Bradley, you asked, what team were you on? Are you talking about the field session team or what was that question concerned? Concern? I think that was for robotics, the FRC robotics team. Ah, ah. So, um, all right, great. You want to talk about that? What was that? Sorry. I don't <laughs> I know. Kind of oh. Yeah. Do you know anything about the robotics? I, I'm not I'm not up to speed on what the robotics team do. I do know that many of our students are involved in various uh, competitions. Um, we do uh, one big competition each semester that many of our students get involved in programming competition or um, hackathon, for example, and our students often do quite well at those competitions, which is kind of cool. Uh, I am not sure about what competitions the robotics teams do. Although I do know we won first place at a IEEE competition a year and a half ago um, down in Louisiana. I remember that. And uh, I love the robot because they put CS at Mines uh, emblem right on the robot, uh, which is kind of cool. All right, Elijah, let's see. Okay, there's some questions. So Austin asked, so CMAP scholarships, CMAP um, first year students, unfortunately uh, for you can't apply to CMAP scholarships in the first year because uh, the applications are due the very first week of the new semester. And first year students are like walking around like, oh my God, I'm in college. And you know, often you know, you're not 100% sure you're even gonna major in computer science. So CMAP scholarships are only eligible for uh, second, third, and um, fourth year students. 
and you would apply the first week of the new fall semester each year. And when you apply, you list which companies you're interested in. You list your first, second, and third um, choice. And then we figure out who gets accepted to the scholarships. And then we try to match students with uh, the companies of interest. Because the benefit of the scholarship is not just the financial scholarship that comes with it, although that's great, every dollar helps, uh, but it's the foot in the door in the door of a company that you're interested in because uh, you'll have a direct connect and connection with them. So strongly encourage you to apply for CMAP scholarships uh, if you come to mind and uh, join our department. So past scholarships were part of the whole admissions uh, process. So if you uh, had said that you were uh, interested in computer science on your application and uh, you have um, financial need, then you should have been invited to apply to PASS. Um, and we've yet to look at those applications. So if you um, are interested in getting uh, applying to that, I think you still can. How do you find out about summer internships? Nick, do you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, I just posted the, the undergraduate or like the high school um, internship information um, on the chat. I'm not sure if that was what you're looking for, but as far as just um, finding more about like summer internships once you're here, um, I could also put in the link in for the, uh, the Minds, uh, sorry, Career Center. Um, and they have a whole bunch of information there on uh, as far as like companies that they hire, like typically hire out of mines and just um, their web pages there. Yeah, we have a system called DiggerNet where um, uh, DiggerNet um, is where all internship opportunities are posted and you can go in and search and find what you're interested in and then you apply directly through uh, DiggerNet. Uh, we also have a weekly email that goes to all of our majors every Tuesday. So you learn about various opportunities with App Minds um, on, you know, for example, um, ACM this week is having a talk on current trends in modern machine learning and AI, for example. And then down below our opportunities outside of Minds, you can see there's internship, 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 um, apprenticeship. So. Uh, we also share any of the opportunities that we hear about, we share with our students, uh, but really encourage you to check out um, the Career Center and DiggerNet. So good question, Elijah. And if you're talking about this summer, use the link that Nick uh, posted. So does Minds have any options for computer science with a music minor? So um, Nick, do you know about the Haas? opportunities for minors? Um, I don't know too much other than uh, you can take the business like focus area uh, and then like take more business classes at kind of towards the end to just kind of complete a minor there. Um, but yeah, I'm not too certain. <laughs> Yeah, so the Haas program, Haas is our humanities, arts, and social scientists department. Uh, I know that they have a minor opportunity, and I know that they have a number of classes that students can take. I'm not sure if any of them is a music focus. So that would be a good question for admissions. I do know that um, Many of the students at Minds are very artistic and creative, and uh, many of our students are involved in the theater, uh, Minds Little Theater, or, and I love going to those plays. I'm always so impressed with all the engineers and the way they can sing and dance, and um, yeah, they do a great job. Uh, many of the uh, students are involved in our marching band or in the a cappella group. Um, so there's lots of opportunities for uh, taking your artistic side and uh, growing in that area if you're interested. And I know our president, our president Johnson, the president of the university, I've often hear him say that the cool thing about mines is we're all scientists and engineers, but we still need people to put on our plays. 
And so it's not the theater majors that are the actors in our plays. It's not the theater majors who are setting up the you know, sets for our plays. It's the engineers <laughs> that are doing that. And so you get to um, you know, use your uh, interests in that area, um, which is kind of cool. So what opportunities are there for game developers? So we have uh, one game development class and we have a game development organization. Uh, so one of our faculty members um, actually has won an award for a game he developed several years ago that when I met him, my husband had played. So that was kind of cool. Um, so he teaches a game dev class and is the faculty advisor for our game dev um, student organization. What school department is the new business engineering management science degree program through? So uh, our, <clears throat> so the CS plus business track is in collaboration with the econ business department on campus. I am not familiar with the new business engineering and management degree. Um, so uh, Natalie, if you want more information about that, you'll have to talk to admissions or feel free to send an email to the department head of the econ business uh, program on campus. His name is Scott Hauser and he's really, really a great guy, easy, um, easy going. All right. right. Uh-huh. How can students become more exposed to computer science at MINDS to decide whether they should pursue a major or minor in CS? So that's, I, I think one of the nice things about MINDS is you don't have to choose your major for a while. So Nick, you wanna talk about that? Yeah, this is something that I think is really cool is um, like on the flow chart, it says that intro to computer science is like a, a CS core, but it's a core for all other or for most other majors as well. So I know um, mechanical engineers and electrical engineers, um, and maybe even chemical engineers all have to take CS 101 um, at least sometime during their four years. Um, and most students do take that their first year. And since your first year, you're doing so much um, with uh, just like interdisciplinary stuff. So you're like not really dive, like not really diving in too much into your major yet. Um, it gives you a good chance to kind of get a feel for um, all the different majors and stuff. So um, the intro to computer science course is a really good job of trying to uh, getting your um, focus on uh, computer science and then uh, just kind of like getting you excited about that. Uh, but you also take like chemistry and um, as well as like some physics classes. So you have exposure to all these different things. Um, and like uh, Dr. Camp said, it's like, you don't really you're not really locked into anything until really your sec or your third after your third semester um so you have a lot of time to decide between these things and by that point if you like want to take the next step up in computer science which is uh, like programming concepts you get a little further into the computer science track um and all these courses are going to be project-based courses so you learn about something and then you're doing a project about it so and those projects are typically really really fun uh, and you need to do a lot of cool things in those uh, that are computer science related. So there's a lot of ways to get really excited about minds or about computer science in minds. So the intro to CS class that Nick mentioned is a breadth class. It's not a programming class. It's a breadth of what is computer science because computer science is much more than just knowing how to code. And so that very first 101 class is a, this is what computer science is. We talk about how the internet works. We talk about uh, cybersecurity and the tools that are being used and the challenges that exist. We talk about machine learning and data science and the problems that they're solving and what type of algorithms are, are being used and how do they work. And we give this big, like, you know, 10 foot level a discussion of um, all the kind of big areas of computer science. And so it's a great class to tell a couple things. One, whether a computer science major is something you might like to do because you really get a feel for what CS is in the 101 class. And then two, it also helps you figure out what track you might wanna focus on. 
because we talk a little bit about the hardware and the low level stuff. And if you really like those modules, then computer engineering might be the track that you might want to check out. Um, so that's the, it's a great first class to get a feel for whether you want a, a major or minor in computer science. All right, I think did, uh, I think we're caught up on all the questions. Is there any other questions we can answer for you? Or did I miss any? Yeah, go ahead, Austin. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which track would you recommend if you're interested in developing like um, web applications or cloud applications or uh, things like that? So in that case, I would probably do the general track and then talk to an advisor about which classes that you should choose for your electives. Like you should take our web programming class, our web development class, our mobile applications class, our three of the uh, CS electives you should take. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, sure, good question. Other questions? The CS plus space track. Yeah, I don't have that one memorized yet because it's still kind of, I mean, it's it's new. We proposed it um, a while back and are just now getting um, the details or just now getting the various approvals. So it's gone through a couple uh, approvals. But let me just pull up the proposal we submitted. So here's our CS plus space program and I'll just jump down to the classes. So if, you, if this track gets fully approved, which like I said, I expect it will, uh, you'll take our Python-based computing class, which is a class where you work with Raspberry Pis um, and do some uh, Python coding. Then in mechanical engineering, you would take the space, op uh, space operations class. Then you would choose one of these three, either elements of computing systems, computer networks, or parallel computing. So that would be a choice. Then you would take space resources and computer simulation and systems engineering. And then again, one of these three, InfoSec, AI, or data science. And then you'd have one choice and then you'd have two free electives. Um, our tracks have 10, uh, but one's always a free elective. So that's what you would do. Uh, if you did the space track and Lockheed Martin and Ball Aerospace are so excited about this track because uh, they're not hiring as many computer science trained people as they would like. And so this will, you know, get more computer science trained people who also have um, some knowledge about space and what goes into um, sending a rocket up there, for example. <laughs> 